Hi there guys, welcome back to another episode of XL Garage. So uh, I think I keep saying this in every episode, but this episode is going to be a little bit different. Once again, we're going to be working on the uh, LS3, getting all the uh, new other new bits in, cam, heads, you know, all that good stuff, all very exciting. Moving towards finishing the engine build, uh, but it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of help from my dad on this one. He, he just wants to be there working on the engine with me. So uh, we'll have cameras on, but not going to be talking to the camera directly to you guys. So there's going to be lots of voiceover, but that's it really. I guess uh, the only thing really to do is, uh, well, get cracking on it really. What are we waiting for? I'll get the uh, camera set up in some interesting ways. I'll get the uh, voiceover done and uh, we'll bring it all to you uh, right now. Enjoy. Right, so here we go guys. Step one of installing the rest of the LS3 here is to get the cam installed. And here I've gone for a Texas Speed LS3 Stage 3 cam, which should hopefully give a nice boost of 50 to 75 horsepower, which would help out nicely in a normally aspirated application. Right. And of course, as the cam goes right in the middle of the block, nestled in the valley of the V configuration, the bearings of this are one-piece shell design. So rather than the top and the bottom of the bearing, the cam simply gets pushed right through them, similar to when you saw me remove the old cam a few episodes ago. So for this, we had to make sure we were using plenty of lube to get it inserted nicely. No smokes at the back, you dirty bunch. And it was just a case of quite literally pushing it home. Each time one of the base lobes came into contact with each of the bearings would meet a little bit of resistance, but it's mostly a case of wiggling and twisting to get it past. You don't want to put too much force to push one of the bearings out or damage them, and likely you don't want to damage the cam either. But all in all, it was very simple. The cam went in easily without, you know, not too much damage. Nah, I'm just kidding. It went in really well, but my hands were very sticky afterwards. It doesn't matter if it's cross-threaded or torque to spec. Tight is tight, right? Despite that, here what you see me using is a torque wrench to wind in and install the cam retaining plate, making sure to torque down the bolts properly. It's quite a simple little piece that simply stops the cam from moving about back and forth and is retained by four bolts. However, it also features a seal built into it, which is quite important for the oil pressure of the engine. So it's an important and easy piece to replace. Um, probably timing chain. So considering how easy it is, how cheap it is, and the fact you pretty much have to do it when taking out and installing the cam, it's a no brainer really. The next step in the engine build, and arguably one of the most important ones, although you could say that about pretty much every step so far, is the timing chain and cam timing gear itself. The cam gear is driven by a chain, which in turn is driven by a sprocket on the end of the crank. It's a very simple setup with no tensioner and no other devices that hang off this and are driven by the chain. It's literally just two gears with a chain connecting them. The cam gear itself has a few raised sections on the gear that allow the cam position centers to know exactly where the cam is in relation to the crank and so on. Although there's no adjustment in this, and there's no longer any VVT in this engine as, as we've removed it, therefore the ECU won't be making any changes to the timing based on RPM or load, etc. However, it does need to know exactly where the cam and crank are in relation to each other. The 
excuse the chipmunk-like voices here. However, the next step of the process is a fairly simple one. All we're doing here is installing new lifters using some brand new LS7 lifters from GM. And of course these are hydraulic lifters filled with oil. One end has a roller on it which sits on the cam lobes. The other end pushes up on the push rod which in turn actuates the rocker arm and opens the valves. Very old school and very simple but it just works in this case and is very important hence replacing them with brand new items. Very simple to install but they did need a little bit of help from some lube to go in. Well hey. So there's definitely some less than wholesome actions going on here. Cover your eyes kids. And then comes the step we're waiting for, finally getting the refurbished heads that we refreshed a few episodes ago onto the engine. First step first, let's get the new multi-layer steel head gaskets on there. Get them right way around, Sam, you bloody idiot. There you go. Come around that side. Had to get the rocker arms out of there as well to access the threads for the new head studs. This process of winding in the head cells can take some time. As you can see, this is the second head, so we've had a little bit of practice before this one. And all in all, it basically consisted of installing the brand new head cells from ARP with their washers, the special grease, and their nuts. Decided to go with ARP's head studs over new head bolts or ARP's head bolt offerings for whatever reason, then I just could. They were quite a pain to get wound into the block, they're machined to such a high tolerance that even when they tell you what tools you need, they barely fit. We had to give the Allen key a few love tabs with a small mallet to get it in the end of the stud as you can see. And then the all important ARP lubricant has to go on with the washers and the nuts. But then, disaster struck. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Where the fuck did that go? Oh, fuck. Half, hang on, I might be able to get it from... Where the fuck did, oh, where did it go? Inside. It's gone inside. It's yeah, gone where in did it valve. go though? Yeah, it's only going to be sitting on the back of a valve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all going so well. At the time we didn't really notice there's a few holes in the heads and one of the washers slipped through onto the back of a valve. Thankfully we didn't have to remove the head to retrieve it. Quite frankly, it's amazing it's only happened once with the two of us. After all of that, there's a very particular torque sequence for the whole thing. The torque itself isn't very high, it's only around 80 foot pounds, which is actually less than the OAM head bolts. Perhaps this is down to the ARP hardware's greater clamping force potential.
but of all of that, the heads are now installed. Huzzah! And the top end of the engine is all done. The last step is to turn the engine over and make sure it all goes around nicely. Check that the rocker arms and valves are being actuated properly, and not to mention check that the valves aren't hitting the pistons, which is always a worry when you go building an engine without properly checking the piston to valve clearance. Whoopsie. Yeah, but the valve will be closed, so it should build compression until the valve opens again, surely. Because it's just kissing that spark plug up. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. But everything went around nicely, we didn't hear any nasty clunks, and I think it's safe to say this engine's ready to run. There's just a few extra steps to go, so we'll get into those next. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Right, as you can see here, we've got the engine almost back in one piece now. Just got a couple of bits really left to do. Got to get the oil pump on, and there's a few bits we need to do before that, before we uh, chuck it on here. Show those later. There's some bits we need to do around the back that are very important. Then we have to get the front and rear covers, a couple more sensors back on. I'll probably chuck the valley cover, the valve cover, and the sump on just to close up the engine. Then we chuck the inlet manifold on. Again, just to keep it all together, and then this is gonna go away for the winter. But let's sort of stop here, let's keep going. So I'll bring you around to the back of the engine, and I'll show you what we have to do next. Right, so down here you can see that we still have the rear cover off. It's a little bit tricky to get it back on with the engine on the stand, so there's reason there to take it off the stand anyway, but we have another reason, and that is this piece. It's called the oil barbell. From standard, they're made of plastic, and this goes in this little hole here. And what that essentially does is you've got one long oil channel that they machine out the block. Kind of see it running along here. It starts at this plug here, and just goes all the way along this big vein, and ends up here. They obviously machine that through the block. It's easier to machine one long continuous hole than try and make segmented holes. And what this does is you have the oil filter here and oil will come along here. It will hit a block here, go down through the oil filter, 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 back up and then through into the crank and the cam and so on. Now what this does is it offers that block. Now, I've taken the old plastic one out, gonna replace it with this new aluminum one, just because if the old plastic one deteriorates, it cracks, it breaks, whatever, you're not gonna have oil going through your oil filter, which is gonna be obviously very bad. So got a new one, they're not very expensive, and I'm gonna replace it now. Now to do that, we need to take the engine off the stand, so just a trick for you if you're doing this at home as well. Getting the old one out can be a little bit tricky, but the easiest thing I found uh, was if you actually put a screw, of course this is, the pla this is the aluminium one, so it won't work with this one, but if this were the plastic one, you can put a screw, screw it slightly into the end with the screw end that's pointing out the back of the block now, just use a pry bar to pry it out. It comes out really easily. You're actually able to get the old one out while it's on the stand because the tolerances are smaller and so you can kind of wiggle it out. This one cannot get in with the engine on the stand, so off it's gonna come. Right, so it's really simple. We're just gonna give this barbell a little bit of oil. I'm not sure if it necessarily needs it, but living in an oil galley anyway, so I'm not too fussed. And that'll just go in here. Just give it a little punt. There we go. That should be in there nicely. And the next step here is just to install the rear plate. The plate has aligns against the, the oil pan here and you also have to put a bit of sealant, but as we're removing the pan, because of course we're not keeping this one, it's wrong for us. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on and not talk down the bolts fully. You can see the back of the Texas Speed cam there. Just put a bit of oil on the uh, rear main seal to give it a helping hand getting over the crank here. There we go. Gentle persuasion is always the way. I'm just gonna use a bit of thread locker on just because we don't really want these coming off, but I don't see that seal coming off again, considering how much persuasion it needed. Here we go. One new rear main seal, new barbell. Getting the engine up on the crane, just for all that. So now it has to go back on the stand and we're gonna move around to the front side. Right, so next up's admittedly a bit of a weird one. We got the new oil pump here, brand new high performance oil pump from uh, GM. And of course this is gonna go on the engine, but it's gonna be sitting there for quite a few months uh, without any oil going through it. Um, and then when time comes to start the car up, all the oil is gonna be in the pan and it's not gonna build any pressure. Damage this, damage the engine, yeah, all kinds of problems. So to help it build up pressure, there's an old trick which uh, may sound a bit weird, but you essentially pack out the oil pump with Vaseline. It's easy to pack it out with. It will melt almost instantly. 
um, the second it gets any heat into it and then it's, so it's soluble with oil. So that's what we're gonna do. First that's first, let's whip this back cover off. All right, and inside we have the gears. Now, of course, these gears are what seized up and it wouldn't allow me to turn over the engine previously. But as you can see, these ones are quite nice and free. So we're gonna pack this out. Just gonna scoop this out of my hand, smash it in there, and then put it all back together. There's no two ways about this, really. It's gonna get messy. You guys can uh, sit back there and watch me make an absolute fool of myself like this. Right, it didn't take very long at all. We have it all packed out, including the in pickup tube point. Just gonna wipe off all the surfaces, put it all back together really, put the gears back in. There we have it. Let's get these bolts back in, give them a little bit of Loctite, just don't want these coming out. Although I don't think they uh, physically can because they are backed up against the engine block. There we go, Let's get this mess on the engine. Right, here we are, back down at the engine here of the newly packed oil pump. Right, so I'm not sure how much the previous clip you were uh, heard. My sound recorder ran out of battery, so whatever, here we are, oil pumps on. Right, so got all the four bolts on here. I believe they're the right bolts. I'll have to go back and check really, but I'm pretty sure they are. And we're just gonna torque them down. We get down to 18 foot pounds. Let's get these torqued down, shall we? Cool, all done. Get the front plate on, and uh, we won't be torquing this down because this gets centered up by the crank pulley. So we'll uh, get that on another time perhaps off camera, probably need help doing that. We won't be doing it this episode. And then we'll talk these down with that. This strangely didn't come with any hardware, despite the fact that it's made by the same people that made the rear one. So I bought some nice titanium bolts. I think they were literally about 20p more expensive than stainless steel. So uh, why not be a bit fancy with it? Or about the fanciest bit of this engine is these uh, titanium bolts. Oh, and the ARP studs, of course. Just gonna wind these in with the gun. Not gonna get them too tight. A final touch you can see here with this uh, great big glaring hole is the uh, cam position sensor. So we're just gonna get this in. There we go, and it has this little bolt. Fantastic. Doesn't that look awesome? It's a shame it's gonna get covered up by a water pump, great big pulley, all these belts, pipes. Oh well. Right, let's get this finished off, shall we? Right, here we are. It's the last step now to button up the engine before we put it away for uh, some storage, winter, whatever, until the uh, car's ready for it. As you can see here, I've chucked the valve covers back on. These aren't new. These are the original ones. They're gonna get replaced but I just thought I'd give them a little lick of paint just to make them look a little bit presentable for you guys. Don't say I don't treat you well, but they are not gonna be blue. I don't know what color I'm gonna go with, perhaps a uh, black, an anthracite or red perhaps. But anyway, so these will get replaced. Let's get the inlet manifold on just to close up these great big gaping holes. There is actually a torque sequence to the inlet manifold, but I'm not really going to torque it down. I'm just going to wind the bolts in. It's just to keep it there. Close up the top of the engine so nothing could fall into the intake valves. So let's just wind these down. There you go, it's not tight. Nice, can make some nice 
lumpy VA idle noises. And there we have it, guys. The LS is all back in one piece. So unfortunately, you guys probably aren't going to see it for a little while. Uh, as I say, I'm going to get the front pulley on and off camera next episode. Perhaps we'll be starting to tear apart the uh, 8.6, get that all apart, get the engine out, ready for this to go in. But really, I wouldn't keep your hopes up too much for a uh, for constant episodes now because, well, money is a thing. Uh, I need to buy parts. Needless to say, I'm not getting uh, any big YouTube dollars. So it all has to come out of my own pocket, but that's fine. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, as I say, this is where we're going to be end ending this episode. Thanks for coming along for this journey. Please do give this video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel to uh, see the future adventures with this engine into the 86. And drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. Were you pleased to see the engine build from start to finish? What do you think of these horrible blue valve covers? Either way, guys, I hope you have a good one. Stay tuned for more. Cheers. Bye-bye.